Hi, I'm Luke Serveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. I want to give a brief shout out to a company that's been around for a bit, but they're new to me. I recently ordered a few of their fittings. Uh, everyone else probably knows about them already. Cinemilled. I think they started out making accessories for gimbals, movies, Ronins, especially for integrating with car rigging. I was watching uh, some of their YouTube videos with uh, Pedro, and he was just going through stuff, and it compelled me to pick up a couple of the swivel cheese burrows, what they call the Houdini clamps. And I have plenty of fixed and swiveled cheese burrows uh, for the small amount of rigging that I do uh, with a one and a quarter speed rail. I don't do a lot of car stuff, and I don't do a lot of advanced rigging, but once in a while it comes up, and so it's nice to have a few bits and bobs to make things work. So I just picked up two of the swivels. Now let me just show those to you. So uh, here they, you know, they come in these really nice sweet packs. Two of these, it's like your basic um, swivel cheese burrow. So let's say this is a, a, the modern set. I have mostly uh, modern uh, cheese burrows. So with this, you would have, you know, it's, it's fully swi swivelable, swivelable. <laughs> you would just have one tie down, you know, uh, with with your wrench uh, on either side. And then once it's fixed on your speed rail, you know, however you want it, it still has a little bit of play. And so the cool thing about this one is, first of all, you use a, an Allen set and you just have one place to tie down on for, 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 both, for both of them. So you don't have two clamshells with two uh, bolts and nuts. You have just one place to tighten them. And they can be this way, they can be whatever, uh, whatever way you want them to be. Uh, and then once you have it where you want it uh, on your speed rail, then you just take that one uh, bolt, tighten it up, and when that sucker's tight, there's no play whatsoever, which is uh, very cool. And it's a little lower profile. And so this is good for car rigging stuff. You know, just um, for the most part, when I'm doing, you know, a little bit of scaffolding or, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, rigging, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can use the other clamps. But um, having a, f a few of these that have no play is really nice. And then on top of that, you have some rig points, so some threaded areas where you can throw in, say, um, you know, a, a, another um, uh, pin into a, a 3 8 16 uh, hole. And so, you know, at different different angles. So that that's, that's pretty slick. Um, so that's that uh, as far as, now I'll just put it back to sort of zero. If I put it back to its flat sort of uh, gun barrel, then uh, I just picked up two of these, and then I picked up just one of these. And what this is, is a fixed. Now, in a sense, this is fixed as well, but your regular fixed cheese burrow would be, you know, 90 degrees to each other. So. You know, you'd have uh, uh, and there's no swivel and no play, right? So that that's your sort of basic cheese burrow. And remember, the modern cheese burrow is a, a smaller footprint than the larger clamshell ones. You know, it is expanded metal, so you know maybe that's different uh, as far as strength or whatever. But for for my purposes, these have always been great. Um, the difference here now is you can have it like this, you know, uh, um, uh, just the same as, as this one, or you can, and now I'm going to loosen it. And the cool thing about this is you can loosen it right through. So this is another rig point, you know, with the threaded, uh, but you can also use it to go through and loosen up your fixed cheese burrow. So to have a cheese burrow that's 
that you can loosen is pretty cool. Uh, now, I don't even have to loosen it all the way. And I can swivel it. And here's the thing. So you can have it at 90 degrees, just like the other one. But you can also have it at 45 degrees. You can also have it at a gun barrel. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, one thing is you don't just have one, one bolt and nut. You have to, and that's another, you know, Allen set. You, you have to uh, do these both separately to un undo it. And then you want to do it, uh, you want to tighten both sides uh, as you go so that you don't have it lopsided. You want to keep them, you know, uh, at, at the same level, so to speak. So it takes a little bit longer, but um, uh, you, you, you get a, a nice fit. Now, if you take this bolt, this center bolt out, so there's the, the little mail pins, and this is a, a handy way to put speed rail onto Cinemilled also makes, you know, like a, a I don't know what you call it, a, a tongue for a tow hitch that this will fit into on, on different sides. Here on the female side, you've got the pinholes for, for these, um, but you also have places you, you have uh, drilled out um, threaded holes with quarter 20. You know, if you want to put in an extra little pin, uh, you also have 3 8 16 So you put that in, but you have a point on speed rail to put your clamp and you want to put a little DSLR or something. So you have a, a, a quick little um, head. Uh, you just pop that on there and now you've, you've got a, a, a way to go. So, I mean, you know, there's certainly other uh, clamps that have that ability, you know, where you don't have both sides, you just have one side and you have either a, a bolt on it or you have a, a, a receiver a thread, but um, this works both ways. So, you know, they've really thought it through well. It's just nice to see well-made equipment that fits into what you already have. And they do a good job of uh, doing everything on, so all, all the, the fittings, everything is done on one inch centers. So uh, here as well. So it will fit into uh, cheese plate or whatever that's done at uh, on one inch centers. So and then, uh, along with that, they just threw in uh, there, branded face mask. This mask has in it, so it just has a, a you know a surgical mask or whatever. And so on that mask, it has the the little bit of band, so you can swap that out. Now, speaking of masks, let's just talk about that briefly. So I'm still looking for the perfect mask to not fog up glasses. And so if you've got any thoughts on that great. Um, I have been searching, you know, on the internet, but, you know, basically you pop this on and if you've got the, the little, you know, bendable wire in there, you press that to your nose. That's great. And then your glasses, um, you know, right now, right here, I'm not getting any fogging. But, you know, early in the morning, whatever, you have different uh, temperature changes and things and body heat. And yeah, so I have a little bit of fog coming up. And so, you know, you want to get it underneath your chin. You want to get it as flat to your face as possible and not have any gaps here. So there, there I'm getting some, some fogulation happening. Um, and then you don't want to have your glasses fall off either, right? Um, so this, this is actually a pretty nice fit as, as masks go. I've been trying all different types. Let's just go through them. First off, I had 
this type. So, where you have these little things so you can, you can uh, change the length of the loops. So that's nice. And then it has a little bendable thing in there. That's great. And it comes under the chin, so that's good. Uh, for the most part, you know, nice. Little horses, everything. Great. Uh, but I found this is, and this is just two layers of fabric. Two layers of fabric, and there's a place for a filter. You know, you can put a filter in there. But uh, with not that much pushing of carts and stuff like that, I was having difficulty breathing well through this. And still, once in a while, sometimes I would fog, sometimes I wouldn't. Then I tried out another company called Mule. And they put out these simple ones that, you know, have a little bendy for the nose and have an extra little gusset under here, which is cool. And, you know, a little smaller, but uh, nice close to the, to the face. And, you know, I'm still getting fog. <sighs> yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I, I can see it there. So then another one I was using was the film tools one. Because, you know, sometimes, well, people would say that it gets a little tiring on your ears for uh, long days. So then I had the film tools. And now these are white. It'd be nice if they were, I don't know, gray or something maybe. Uh, but then I guess you know if it's dirty or not. And the ties are better for your ears. You know, so that's nice. Comes underneath the chin, tight. And then here, there is no bendy. There is no metal here. So I was thinking of like making a little hole and putting some of that, you know, the old uh, Kinoflex wire. In, in into there uh, just to help that and sometimes I don't get any fog and other times I do so you know here fogging up well then someone said you know what you do is you put a little bit of toilet paper or Kleenex you know uh, tissue just by the nose and then that is just enough of a air dam to keep your breath from fogging up your glasses. Well, sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so even though these are comfortable, Sometimes I would get the fog up, sometimes I wouldn't. Um, it's just kind of a drag. You want something that is reliable. Well, then there's this um, vacuum company, Starks or something like that, and they make this thing with a little, with a little nose dam thing. So put that on, and then you can flip up the nose thing. So now, You've got an extra flap there. It doesn't go down underneath the chin that well, but if you put your glasses on top of the dam, it's a little better. But I went walking early this morning with my wife and it's like, I was just fogged up completely. So maybe a combination of this of the Kleenex kind of thing. Yeah, you know, could work. But it's like, I feel like I have to have a couple different versions of things and then just see which one works on the day. Now, I haven't tried, you know, the anti-fog juice like you'd put on snorkeling or diving mask. So that's another option, I guess. So anyway, fun, fun, lots of different, uh, possibilities out there. If you've got a tried and true surefire way to keep your glasses from fogging, let me know. <laughs> let us all know because uh, that would be helpful. Whoop. Boy. Hey, you know what? 
if it keeps people safe, I'm all for it. It's a, a pain in the ass, but it's worthwhile. There you go. Wear your mask. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. One last thing, uh, I've got this little box with a zippered lid that you can use to decontaminate small stuff like keys, blades, flashlights, holsters, phones, even your gloves or mask. Uh, you pop in your tchotchkes, you zipper it closed, you plug it in, press the button, three and a half minutes later, you're good to go. So here's the box, zipper it open. Look inside, and it's got this little, you know, uh, tray to keep it away from the bottom uh, UVC LEDs. And so some boxes have only six LEDs on the bottom, and that's not enough. This has uh, 12 on the bottom and 12 on top. And then it has these little protection things here. You put in your stuff, you know, whatever it is, and close it up. Zipper it. And then now you, there's a little place here to plug it in. Now this lights up. And then uh, once you click on that, you do this for three and a half minutes. And once you open it up, it's, it's done. So let's just, uh, let that sit there for a minute. Okay, there we go. These guys are now decontaminated. How slick is that? Hey, gotta love the little things. All right.